Howdy folks and welcome to 15 Nautica Mile Arc. Today we're going to do leg 3 of our Lake Superior Tour. We're starting in Michigan at Houghton County Airport. We're going to go to Sault Ste. Marie Sanderson Airport on the United States side. So we're going to remain in the United States. We're going to avoid customs. However, we are going to fly over Sault Ste. Marie Canadian side. You'll notice today um, we are flying a freeware jet. This is the Eclipse 2.0. At least at the time I acquired this aircraft, it was freeware. There were rumors that it may become payware and that it may have already been payware or something, but I haven't been keeping up because uh, it's the internet. You don't know what to believe on the internet. So, freeware when I acquired this. Um, by the time you watch this, I don't know if you have to pay for it or not. I believe it is a payware quality aircraft. It is not a study quality aircraft, but it is payware quality. Everything is modeled, everything seems to work. The Garmin seems to be reduced functionality, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Comes with about eight or nine liveries. I just picked this one. It's a little busy for me, but I thought maybe a change from the standard white aircraft with single color pinstriping. You notice I have the sim muted right now because that GPU is really, really loud. So if you're wondering where the GPU sound is, it's there. I just have it muted. It's going to be sunrise today, so we're going to fly into the sun. Hopefully it'll be okay and won't be too blinding. Um, but then when we land, it'll be light time. I haven't had much sunrise or sunset flying lately, so I thought we were due for a change. We do see some lights turned on on the aircraft. That's just on. I didn't do that, and that's just how it is. So let's hop inside here, and let's have a look at the aircraft. We'll shut the door. We'll turn on some battery and generator so that we can... Um, so we can see what's going on. Like I said, fully modeled FMS works. All this stuff works. Um, full functionality of your glass cockpit. I am not a huge glass cockpit fan. I like things simple. I like just a few gauges that don't do a whole lot, but keep it simple. Oh yeah, and we're starting on the ramp, or at the stop line for the runway, by the way. It's a 2D model airport. I'm not too worried about where we start for 2D airports. I do not know if there's going to be a 3D airport when we get to Sault Ste. Marie. I do have an Upper Michigan package installed that has freeware airports. I don't know what those include. I also don't know what is included in the 10.45 update that includes all of these airports. We in the modeling community have been designing for X-Plane. They're finally in the sim, but I don't know what that includes, so we'll see when we get there. There is a checklist with this aircraft. I can't remember how to get to it, which is silly because when I was practicing with this plane, I had the checklist up and doing all this stuff. But I can't remember. I do remember that the checklist is the type where it lists everything from the original checklist of the aircraft, but things that aren't modeled are grayed out. And it's so simple to operate this aircraft. It's, I'm not even going to pull it up. I already turned on my electrical. We'll start the engines, kill the GPU, and off we'll go. I'm not too worried about it. You can download this aircraft yourself if you want to dig into it even more. Um, since we are on the hold point, we are going to turn on some lights um, just so that people can see where we are and it won't run into us while we start up our engines here. Oh, notice our GPU turned off all by itself. That's interesting. I to turn on, turn on the nav light and the GPU turned off. All right, fine, whatever. Don't have to worry about them. Let's just go up here, turn on our fuel, and get this engine started. It's really tricky. You kind of have to go left to get it to go right. So, there we go. You have to hold it long enough or it won't start. There, sounds like it kicked in. We can come back down here. We can see it winding up. In fact, we'll trim this while we're sitting here. Trim it for takeoff. Get it in the green. There we go. All right, stabilize. We'll start the other engine now. If I can find that exact spot where you have to be. So I clicked on it and moved the mouse left to get it to start. I kind of wish the GPU didn't turn itself off because I like doing those little things, but so be it. Um, turn the auction if you get above 10,000 feet, except it's not modeled. That's modeled though. And if we pop outside, we should see the engines running, and there we go. My landing lights turn themselves on. I didn't turn my landing lights on. We'll turn them on anyway. We're going to be taking off soon. Alright, so I'm just going to turn this on map. 
Um, now, I do have a flight plan for GPS, however, there seems to be a reduced functionality GPS in this unit, which may be the only downside if this becomes payware. However, if there is a payware update version, this might be modeled, I'm not sure. You can do your own research if that's something that interests you. So I'm just going to do a direct to because I know these built-in X-Plane smaller GPS units only have a direct to. That's all you can do. I'm trying to decide how or which waypoint I want to pick. I don't want to go direct to the airport because I want to be able to line up for an approach. There's no ILS. You're supposed to put in your GPS approach and then just follow your altitude and GPS waypoints to find the airport. We're not going to have that luxury since I don't want to be reprogramming this every way, every waypoint is too complicated. So I'm thinking I'm going to put in cat cut, cat tug. And if I do that, we need to be 2,600 feet above mean sea level, and then from there we should be able to look at our map and see the airport, and use that as a guide, and hopefully see the airport by then. Hopefully I'm not picking a waypoint too close to not be able to line up to the airport because that happens sometimes as well. Um, you know what, that being said, I'm going to back up, I'm going to back up this QSEP. So I'm used to doing this on the full function payware version. Let's see if I can figure this out on the freeware version because it is a little different. I'm looking for, there we go. Okay, why can't I type anything? Why is it only letting me go? Do I have to push? No? Um, well, wait a minute. There we go, I wasn't back all the way. Okay, let's do Kuseb. Sorry to all of you watching this and just cringing who have experience with this GPS unit. Whoops, too far. To you. C. Okay, so I hit initialize. I assume that means initialize. And there we are. I'm also going to put in the VOR just in case. And the VOR is behind the airport so if we have to at least it's a way to get lost or if we get lost we can locate the airport based on that although we do have a full-fledged map up above we shouldn't have that problem but just in case so we want 112.2 whoa wait a second here point two and it should be big there we go big 112.2 switch all right so that'll get us the VOR if we need it. So let's go over here and our GPS, there we go. And will this give me my new range up there? No. I want my range to change here. Well, that's not what these are for. That move. Whoa, there we go. Let's go. I want to go 20 miles. 10? Let's do 10 in case we um, get lost. We want to see things better. Alright, so. Can I push these to turn these off? I want, what do I want turned on? I want airport and waypoint. I don't want VOR, we'll keep the traffic. We don't have any traffic. We'll keep the weather on, although I don't think there's any weather. Um, 9,800 nautical miles. No, 163 nautical miles, 9,800 Nah, per second? I don't. Is that the time? I, can't, I, don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, we're not going to use autopilot because I want to hand fly this plane. If you wonder what reflections mean, this is to turn off features and um, get better frame rates. Alright, I think we're ready to go. We have our map we zoomed in the way I want. We have our direct to waypoint. We have a VOR tuned in just in case. And then here turn this off but we can tell it to use our source you know GPS we want to turn that to GPS um, no EDF there's our checklist there is our checklist right in front of my nose okay unbelievable all right so source we'll turn that to nav one if GPS isn't working out for us when we get close to the V um, to the VOR everything is set ready to go all right, let's get out of here. Let's um, pull off the parking brake. And let's give it some throttle. Keep going a little bit here. Very smooth. I barely touched that throttle. Uh, let's do flaps down for takeoff. And it is 
just kind of going on its own here. Sun just coming over the horizon, looking good. Get into position and let's give it a go. Going easy on the rudders. Last cockpit, so as soon as it turns green on our airspeed, we'll know we can take off with flaps. Since it's not going to turn green, it's just the orange goes away, and we're going to be over speed soon, so let's get up. Very easy to fly, almost too easy. Very, very lightweight. I'm not even touching my yoke, and it's going all over the place. Let's get those flaps up right away. Gear up. Whoops. And instead of gear, I hit autopilot. Whoopsies. Not the flight director, I don't look at you. Autopilot's off, right? Gear up. Looking good. Nice sunrise. Heading straight for the clouds, 4,000 feet, 4,800 and climbing. Oh, no, I want my map back. Alright, let's join our route. I know it was a clock that started somehow, I didn't do that. Right into the sun, just like I said it would be. Let's draw back on the throttle a little bit. We're climbing pretty steep. We're at 5,000 feet per minute. I don't think that'd be very comfortable. Good. It's so different to fly a jet after these slow props, let me tell you. Alright, let's go back and join our route. Wow, very light on the controls. I'm barely touching anything in this plane. This goes wherever it wants. There you go, that's a better rate of climb here. Okay, turn off the landing lights, we're above 250, or 10,000 feet I mean. Let's increase our speed a little bit as well. Trim down, trim nose down. Not that much. Wow, that sensitive trim. Everything is extra sensitive in this plane. That's what that's telling us. 26 minutes, 0.1 seconds. So that's minutes slash seconds. Right? Interesting way to write that, I guess. And now I got it right. And yeah, we're about to join our route here. Let's see if I can quick look outside without messing up here. There you go. Looking good. I like it. I like it a lot. In real life, we would have engaged autopilot immediately, but I've been doing so much autopilot, I just want to hand fly today. Especially because it's a jet, I haven't flown in a very, very, very long time. Alright, we're about to join our route. I'm looking at both the map on the right with the red line and my gauges in the center with the blue dial. 
telling me where we are in relation to the route. We'll go to about 18,000 feet, I think. And we'll level off, draw back the throttle a little bit so we don't overspeed. Let's see what we're looking out the other windows here. Another window. I had another view. Mainland Michigan. Over here we have whoa. Over here we have the ponytail of Michigan, Upper Peninsula. Okay, I better watch what we're doing here. Yeah, I thought we were sinking. I'm trying to stabilize the aircraft by hand and then we will um, do some sightseeing in a moment here. Alright, stabilized and I've just engaged autopilot because I want to do some sightseeing. And it'd be fun to fly this thing by hand for our trip, but it's not fun for you guys because I would just be steering at gauges the entire trip. And that's no fun. I like how we're just below the cloud level at 18,000 feet for 17.8. So all I did was I just hit alt when I hit 18,000 and turned it nav. My nav is set to GPS and that's from right here, my source. And just flicked on autopilot. Um, yeah, we're just going to do that. Now I can do some sightseeing. We got 18 minutes before I have to figure out what in the world I'm going to do. We will come down long before then though. We'll come down at about... 70 nautical miles or so. So I just wanted to fill you in on what I was doing. And um, yeah, let's do some sightseeing.
All right, we got 10 minutes to our waypoint. It's 63 nautical miles. We have to start coming down here. I should be able to use vertical speed. I would like to come down 2,000. There's minus on here. I would like to come down 2,000 or so feet per minute. Well, come on. Keeps changing on me. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is, this is so com unnecessarily complicated. Come on. Down, 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 down. There, 2100. We'll leave it right there. Leave it at that. Turn back the throttle so that we don't overspeed and that we don't run out of time before we reach our altitude here. I think we're looking good otherwise. One. Whoa, what's going on? I must have clicked something else again. Forget it, we'll just come down to 600. All right. Uh, we're still above 10,000 feet. We don't need a landing light yet. Look about the window, though, if you're looking. Oh, those are cool clouds. Look at that. Anyway, if you're looking, this is obviously mainland Michigan. Can't see Canada yet. We will. What will happen is we'll come in and we'll see more land. This will be Canada here. We're going to fly over Canada. The United States will go behind it and we'll land. We'll land behind it. Uh, let's do some IFR flying right now. We need to climb. Ten minutes. We want to be, what do we want to be at? Um, 2,800 feet. I don't, think we, I don't think we need to slow down that much. Once we get closer to 10,000, I'll reduce speed to 250. I just don't want to take too much time here. Oh yeah, our runway heading is 143 degrees. So which one is our heading bug here? Oh boy, it's probably a panel somewhere. I'm not very good with glass cockpits. It's not a secret. Not a fair spite either. I just, um, I just don't know that much about glass cockpit and stuff. But where to find things, like I want to change my heading bug 143 degrees so I know where the airport is. Because it's a good way if we go over the airport and have to go around, it's a good way to find the airport is to follow your heading bug. Um, but I don't know where it is. I could spend a half an hour figuring it out, but I really don't care. All right. Uh, 13,000. We better slow down a little bit so that we stay below the speed limit when we get to 10,000 feet. We probably don't have to come down this steep anymore. Where's the plus? Come on, plus. There you go. That'll slow us down, too. There you see the mainland in front of us now. I was talking about instead of off to the side, see how it's gonna come around. Sun's behind the clouds. Looks like cabin air is modeled. Looks like cabin air is modeled, but don't worry about that too much. I don't think I have blackouts turned on in the sim. Any lights now. Alright, so I see. So I know, or I apologize that I don't know every single switch and dial on this aircraft, but hopefully it's enough of an overview for you all that if you would like to download the aircraft yourself, um, you can figure those things out yourself to however much detail you want to put into it. That's kind of the point of these videos anyway isn't to do everything 100% accurately, but it's a good overview and some ideas of what you can do yourself. And then you just take those ideas and make more of it, make less of it, depending on your style in the sim. That's what's nice about sims, is it's what you make of it. Alright, 6 minutes, 32 nautical miles to go. And we're at 6,000 feet. 
we need to get down to 3,000. So let's bring this up here to... Come on, where's my plus? I want to be about 500 now, or else we're going to get there too soon and disturb the neighbors. did math. 6,000 feet, 6 minutes. We only need to go to 3,000 feet, so half of that is 500 feet per minute. Makes sense? Now keep in mind, this is to a waypoint. This isn't to the airport. Have a look outside. Looking good though. Nice to see some lands. Of course, we're over Michigan and Upper Peninsula and Lake Superior's here. Cannot see across the lake, of course. Looks like you can see a little bit of land there, which would be more of Canada, which would be accurate. Four nautical miles. Let's increase our speed a little bit here. Get closest to the speed limit as we can. We got some highways, some beaches, a little river, two train tracks down there. This is HD version 3 mesh, of course. I've been doing all my flying with version 3 except for my two previous. Australia videos where I compared two and three. Look back around the corner a little bit here. Boy, I'm getting about 18 and a half frames per second. Probably because I have clouds turned on and full reflections in the sim aircraft turned on. Well, just above the speed limit, we better reduce throttle a little bit here. Let's just so you were received in the aircraft or sit in the back here. Turn around here. Just a couple seats, some luggage, three passengers, and some luggage. 15 nautical miles. Now, all of a sudden, you can see Canada. And what we're going to do is fly up in this area. I don't think we really need to make a turn. I think we're pretty much just going to be straight in. There might be a little bit of dog leg, but the plan I took based on the approach plate is pretty much just straight shot. So the airport's going to be right over here. We'll fly over the Canadian airport, like I said in the beginning, and then we'll just land on the United States side. Canada, clearly. Michigan. Very nice scenery. So let's go back to here and let's switch. Actually, I'm going to have to kill autopilot before I switch this to nav. Then we want to pick up that VOR. Let's kill autopilot for now. We're right, let's look at that exactly where we want to be, too. We've got five miles left coming up on our, coming up on our altitude. Let's switch this over to nav one. 
So if we need to find the VOR, we can. Let's put this back. So this cacta was on my approach plan. So let's follow that. Let's go there. That was on my original plan. And let's um, keep our speed the same. It's all trimmed out. Don't have to really touch anything. So on cacta, we got to be 2,600 feet. We'll just fly this in ourselves, I think. Well, that's nice scenery. Got some hills. Not completely flat. Looks beautiful in the sim. It must only look more beautiful in real life. Very ready to make a turn with Tacta. Not quite yet. I'm going to use the throttle now to controller to set to 2600 feet because we're trimmed at about 248 nautical mod 248 knots alright let's make our turn to Kaka and then AJ Pay which you see right behind it we want to be 1700 feet there so let's not lose altitude yet Turn a little more here. So the, we're over Canada now, and then this river is the divider back to the United States. So we should see, unless there are two rivers, maybe there are two rivers. We should see a few airports here. So I'm still not quite lined up. I was too busy sightseeing. I wasn't really looking at my map at all. Alright, are we about? There, you see the orange dots pointing at our VOR. So this is pointing at our VOR, which is behind the airport. So we don't really want to follow that. And then here's Kanj. There's our airport right there. So let's lose some speed a little bit. We're coming up pretty fast. So we're going to go from here to AJP to Kanj. This is the Salt St. Marie in Canada. If we were to look outside super fast, there it is. So this is the Canadian Salt St. Marie, then here's a river, then here's Michigan. Let's get some gear down. Although it might be kind of fast for gear, I never looked into that. Should look at my plates first. There we go. Now we're lined up with the airport. Do you see it there? Let's slow down even more. Let me get some flaps. Down, and we're gonna float, and we're above. Oh my goodness! Float, float, float. Full flaps. Gear down. I want to look at my. One thousand. Yeah, I know. Oh boy. Let's do some nose up trim because I am really fighting, 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 fighting. The yoke is almost all the way back. Look at that crosswind. Oh my goodness. Let's level off here. That's how we catch the glide slope. And we'll know we catch the glide slope because the path will start to change. not working. The trim isn't changing over on my gauge over there. Oh, okay. It's working in the beginning. Did the trim crash on the sim? That happens sometimes with freeware aircraft. You'll lose functionality sometimes with certain features. Because that trim gauge did not move and I just went nuts on the trim Sweet. wheel. Good. Here we go. One hand on the throttle, one hand on the yoke. Oh, I'm fighting hard. What in the world? What happened to my trim? Oh well. I shouldn't have to worry about it. I'll just fight. One. Oh 
like 50, all the way 40. back. My yoke is all the way back. Over the runway. Up and down. 30, oh. 20, 10. Man. Oh. 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 Uh, that was the worst landing ever. Hang on, let's pull off and I gotta figure out what happened to my trim. That's all I really worry about. So, my <laughs> yoke was all the way back and my throttle was not responding very well and my trim was all screwed up. I just couldn't get out of that with the trim so bad. I wonder what happened to my trim. Well, that is officially my worst landing ever in this aircraft. And none in this sim on my channel. Let's, hey, look, we have a model of the airport. Looks like I thought we would. It's, um, I don't know where we're going, though. I don't know if there's an FBO here. Let's get some trim up. Okay, let's get some correct lighting going here. Let's just go over here. Then we'll just check out some awful, awful, awful replays. Well, can't win them all. That was clearly my worst landing ever. That was horrifying. I don't really think we would have survived that in real life. I think we would have broken some stuff. Okay, we're just going to go over here. Stop here. Let's let the parking break. Well, here we go. Let's see what um, my worst landing ever looks like. Hmm. I don't even know what to say about that. Let's try from another angle. Cool looking approach though. Over the street. I'm not exactly sure what was going on. Oof. <laughs> I don't think jets are designed to bounce. Tiny aircraft. Tundra aircraft, bush flying aircraft maybe, but no, 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 no. Let's see if our passengers survived. I backed up quite a ways because I want to enjoy some scenery. Looks like we got some buildings in there that are accurate. Again, that's Canada in the background on the side of the water. I've been over those bridges in real life. Um, all the senior citizens from this side cross over there for the casinos. So I was told, 40. never cross Thursdays at 2. It'll take hours and hours and hours to get across back to the United States. 40. Anyway, it's looking 30, good 20, until 10. there. Oh, I like the radio tower in the background. Alright, let's check out tower view, then we'll be done. I take that back, I meant let's check out runway view. Oh, wow. Alright, back in real life. Oh my goodness. Um, kill engines. There we go. Kill engines. Turn on the ground power. See, I can't even turn on the ground power with some of the stuff on. There we go. There's a GPU. Open up the doors, I guess. Turn off some stuff. Yeah, yeah. I might, I might um, have gotten fired from that one. Kind of hard to tell. Not sure what our passengers would have thought if they would have even survived. What are those lights staying on? Um, all right. Well, I really, 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 really enjoyed the flight. I really, really enjoyed flying the aircraft. Those are positives. My landing was hideous. I don't know, whatever. Um, but that's leg three. Welcome to Sault Ste. Marie. Still in Michigan. Still in the United States. Um, 
I will be preparing the 727, the Fly J Sim 727 for Lake 4. I'm going to go straight across the lake to Thunder Bay, Canada. And I'm going to do a little bit of practicing because the approach for that airport, the only published approach, is very strange. And it includes GPS and VOR and ADF. And it's just, I don't know, I couldn't find a better official approach plate for that. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll see you on the next one.